today's video we're taking a look at an all new frame from Flywoo. Now this is called the Chaser frame and to be honest it is a really really interesting frame due to the way they've designed it with ease of mind in use because these are the most annoying frames to work on especially if you're into the scene whoop scene. Now first of all this is a 3 inch quadcopter and it does have a lot of protection and the way they've engineered or designed the protection is freaking amazing and I'll get to show you that in a bit. So this is supposed to run also both FPV analog systems and as well as the DJI air unit with a simple 3D printed part transition. So right now it's in FPV analog mode if I wanted to set up the DJI mode as you can tell it's pretty thin and DJI is kind of thick and that's not going to fit anywhere in here so it would fit like this. Let me actually show you that. It would fit upwards like that into the frame also, the SD card is going to be accessible, which is a huge thing because these frames are very difficult to put together at times due to the amount of things they have, which again, I'll show you in a bit here. So all I have to do is basically replace this with this right here, and it'll keep the SD card available for me. Now, also another thing with all of this being set up here, for example, we have this little angle tilt for the camera, as you can tell right here, and also this, you are still able to fit most 1500 milliamp 4S LiPos as well as 1300 milliamp 6S LiPos. However, I don't recommend uh, tattoos because they just keep dying for some reason. I don't know why. So back to the, the battery. So the battery will fit really great. Now, if we discuss the frame mounting solutions, for example, we have the flight controllers and the ESC. We have M3 holes for both 20 by 20 and as well as 30 by 30 here. So you could either set up a 20 by 20 stack or a 30 by 30 stack. And you don't have double stacking solutions. So just keep that in mind. But you do have enough space back here for a video transmitter, possibly a 20 by 20. But this 20 by 20 would probably just be held down with two screws or probably just double-sided tape on the bottom here. Now the bottom piece of the frame is a one piece. Same thing goes for the top plate. It's all one piece. However, the top plate is two millimeters. The bottom plate is 2.5 millimeters. But don't let that scare you because the protection is insane. Let me show you this actually. The carbon fiber never touched anything here. They're using this really thick foam and I'll show you a piece from it right here. It is really, really thick. And it's really good. It's re I've never seen anything like it, to be honest. But it's really thick and really nice. And, you know, when you get it out of the box, you have to basically pop this stuff out of there. But they would have saved a lot of weight if this wasn't in there. But it keeps the overall structural integrity of the foam in perfect condition in case the box gets damaged. So that's also something really nice and very thoughtful. However, you can still use these foam parts for later on, which I'll get into in a bit here. So the way they have this foam be so sturdy, obviously, if I push here, it might bend in and get into the propeller, which is... The problem with most of the 3D printed version of the ducts. Now, don't consider these as ducts. This is only protection for the quadcopter, a person, and also the propellers. However, back again to the foam. When I push here, it's not going to go through. Why? Because we have carbon fiber pieces, as you can tell right here, that'll slide through and add reinforcement. So this is not going through because after this, there's this carbon fiber piece. And you can see those everywhere. Here, 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 here here, here, they're just everywhere. Not only that, you also have standoffs under these screws and the standoffs are also adding a lot of structural integrity. This thing is gonna take some abuse. Now the only part that won't take, I think, abuse in my opinion is probably the back. The back here is only protected with one 3D printed part, which I misplaced and I actually forgot to place it in, uh, but we'll, we'll do that later on anyways. So the, the back is the only thing that's really exposed out of this whole thing especially with the buzzer and this buzzer and LEDs also come with it, which is really nice. Uh, so you, the back is only protected with these 3D printed parts right here, or this one right here, basically. I wish there was a slight more protection here, but I guess this is what we have to work with. But the front, if we take a look at the front here, you can see it's completely protected with the foams. And we also do have these to protect the bottom uh, of the carbon fiber. And as you can tell, if you crash into it like this, depending on your angle, more likely you're going to be crashing upwards like this if you're flying like this. This will probably get hit here, but you still have a lot of protections. You can tell it portrays out or just comes out even more here just to kind of give you a bit more protection. Now for camera, be very careful because this thing only fits a micro. So you'll be able to put a micro camera or you'll be able to put a nano with a micro adapter in here if you are going to be using an analog camera. Now obviously DJI stuff fits in here perfectly. And to remove the camera is actually quite simple. I really like this whole, uh, the way they've actually executed this. You just remove these four screws and this whole thing 
thing comes off, you don't have to move the whole upper plate because moving, removing the whole upper plate is going to be a pain in the ass, especially when you have to align every single piece of the carbon fiber. But that is the trade off for the structural integrity and the crash resistance. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this before. This is also a three inch quadcopter. So keep that in mind. Now, let's just kind of just simulate how this whole stack would be set up. Now, yeah, back to the camera solution. So, for example, I'm going to be using a GoPro Hero 8 here. The problem here, which I wish they would have done slightly differently, or maybe I just put it in wrong, which is this 3D printed part. It's good, but it's kind of useless because the carbon fiber sticks above the 3D printed part here. This is all TPU. So if you put your camera, it's kind of scratching. So I'd highly recommend you put something on top of that, maybe some uh, uh, some of that non-slip sticky stuff. So I recommend doing something on top of this, for example, maybe cutting a piece of the foam here and setting that there to kind of add a little cushion also for your GoPro. So it does help. And the way that the GoPro mount is set up is really nice as well because you can do the two strapping solutions, which is a session type. So you'll be able to strap around and the hero type. So you'll be able to strap around this way because if, for example, I'm using a Hero 8, I'm gonna have to strap like this. I can't strap sideways. And if I'm using a session, you can't strap forward, you're gonna have to strap sideways. And again, that's very thoughtful here. So I really like that as well. Now, for example, when I used the Hollybro, it was really a pain in the butt to access this and get the uh, SD card out. But here it's gonna be really nice because obviously it's gonna be sitting right in there, just portraying up slightly with this little cover right here. Now they also do provide you with the 3D printed parts, which will go right here in order to hold the antenna. So the antennas will also be protected, which is going to be really great. And obviously we're going to be building this uh, very soon on the channel. I think I'm going to do the DJI. Now the reason why I put DJI on this, even though I think it will increase the weight, I think, I'm not sure, um, is for a couple reasons. One is you can really see what you're capturing. Uh, especially if you're going for the scene whoops, because the whole point of these is not to do acrobatics, it's to actually get nice shots of specific areas where it might be too dangerous or too difficult to fly in. So uh, this is the type of frame that you kind of want to go for. And this is the reason why I'd probably stick a DJI air unit inside just to see if I've got everything framed up nicely and you get that nice, beautiful live video HD footage. So now for the weight, this is like this, roughly 136 grams. Plus or minus, if you're going to be with the DJI setup, a couple grams or so here. So we can say anywhere between 130 to 140 grams. So depending on what you set up on here, really, uh, that'll kind of change this slightly. You could also remove the buzzer and LED, which I think are really useful. And I'd actually keep these on there uh, because you're not going to be going that fast. And rarely you'll be going backwards to hit any of that because just the buzzer itself portrays out here. So yeah, just keep that in mind also. Now overall, in my opinion, personally, this is a really, really nice frame and we're going to be building it on the channel in the upcoming days once I get most of the parts. All I'm missing is a flight control ESC. I got the motors, so we'll be able to build this together and see how uh, well it's going to be executed, how well it's gonna fly. And I think it's gonna make for a very interesting video. And with that being said, everything is linked down below, guys. If you could check those out, those go to support channel. And there's already a pre-built 4S and 6S variants. I'll have them linked down below. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.